Mr. Jaitley, thank you very much and congratulations on your maiden budget. And uh, so Mr. Jaitley, you, know, you had a huge mandate. So with a, with a big mandate, the expectation was of a big bank budget. You have presented what you yourself are describing as a directional, directional budget. Uh, have you held yourself back? Have you been a little cautious to start with? And well, so there, is, there is no step which we had to take which we have not taken. But these are not the only ste steps. I called it directional from that point of view. In a 45 day exercise, what do you do? You analyze the situation. You look at all the issues pending on the drawing board unresolved. And you decide and proclaim your policy on those issues. You are able to go all the way in some issues, you are able to go part of the way because you think that's the appropriate stand to take. Then you look at sectors you have to encourage. And then what impact it will have on the common man. Yeah. Now, are we to revive the growth process in this country? Are we to get investors back? Are we to persuade domestic investors from flying out of the country? Are we to give a fillip to our manufacturing sector? Now these are all challenges before us. Are we to address the supply side which then takes care of the, uh, uh, the inflation related issues? How do you look at certain specific sectors of the economy which can actually be the engine drivers of growth? You have a huge problem in hand that there are unexplored areas of investment and the, there are some decisions by government of India and our own systems which uh, uh, in fact uh, make the investors disinclined to come to India. Now all these issues on the drawing board and part of these were problems created by the UPA government and therefore I had certainly to address each one of those issues and uh, which required immediate attention, we've certainly addressed them. Right. Mr. Jaitley, on retrospective taxes, you've announced that in future there will be no retrospective taxes, you've announced a, a vision for the next three years about stability of taxes, but you've not resolved the existing problems which are daunting investor sentiment. Is the overhang of the fact that uh, you have personally appeared for Vodafone and you've recused yourself from that decision, something that was an that overhang? Had nothing, that had nothing to do with this issue. Uh, this issue was uh, handled at a very senior level in this government. You see, there were three parts of the problem. We have addressed all three. One, should there be retrospective tax creating fresh liability? Does parliament have the power to enact retrospectively? I can't curtail Indian parliament's jurisdiction. So Indian parliament certainly has a sovereign right to enact retrospectively. They have done it in the past, it's legal, it's constitutional. Should they do it? There are extreme cases, for instance, you've collected a tax for the last 30 years, some court strikes down that provision. Do you refund 30 years of tax and make the treasury absolutely uh, blank? Or do you enact to protect what is already collected? It's possible. But do you enact today? To create a new liability in a back date, we've said ordinarily no, which actually means this government is not in favor of it. So we've addressed the problem for the future. What happens to the 2012 legislation? Are more notices going to be issued? We've addressed by having the, C, uh, uh, the, the, the CBDT mechanism in that to say assessing officers will not issue notice. Go to the CBDT if you come across any case and we'll then examine it whether it has to be done or not. Because I've said in my statement today, it impacts on uh, the, the investment environment. How do you address the past notice? That's the issue which you say hasn't been addressed. As far as the past notice is concerned, it's in litigation. And therefore I have categorically said, I hope the litigation is resolved and we get a verdict very soon. Uh, Mr. Jaitley, you know, uh, so I am clear yeah. about all the three contingencies. Yeah. 
Uh, Mr. Jaitley, a lot of people were surprised when you picked up this 4.1% target. You said yourself that Chidambaram's target is daunting, but you took up the challenge. Uh, when I look at the, the details, a lot of economists actually suggested that you should come up with a more realistic figure. This is the, some of our panelists said you should come out with a more, let there be truth telling, even if it hits, hits our credit ratings for a mobile, etc. In fact, they said it won't. My question to you is more on your receipt side, sir, if I can just go into detail on that. Are you being slightly over-optimistic on your, on, your, on your receipts, sir? I'm, I'm, see, 31% jump in service tax, okay, non-tax revenue 24%, but you have this and you didn't mention the word disinvestment, you have like a 145% jump uh, from the revised budget estimates in miscellaneous non-tax receipts, which is disinvestment. Uh, so are you being slightly off? optimistic on your receipt mm. side, especially on disinvestment? You see, I am, I am hopeful. I won't use the word optimistic, but I am realistic. The roadmap set by Mr. Chidambaram for this year was 4.1%. That roadmap has been set also to emphasize, re-emphasize and over-emphasize the importance of fiscal prudence. Yes. Otherwise, everybody in the system, other ministries, states, segments of public opinion will come up and say, give me this concession, give me this concession. And you have to tell them that I can't spend beyond my means. And therefore, in my speech, I have said that if it's effectively, if I spend beyond what I earn, then I am leaving a legacy of debt for the next generation. I am spending more so that my children or the next generation has to pay more taxes to cover up for this debt. That's not economic management. Therefore, I think 4.1 is the correct target with Mr. Chidambaram had fixed. How do we achieve it? We achieve it in two manners. Do we spend less? Some areas, monies don't get spent. But consciously, you don't contract the economy because my whole effort is to expand economic activity. Do you then raise more revenue? So it's based on that hope or faith that if you resolve some of the issues of credibility of Indian economy, people are bound to look at you once again. People are bound to invest in India once again. And therefore, economic activity as it picks up, the revenues are going to pick up. Today, if one of your sectors, let's say highways, not at a standstill, but very slow, banks not lending, real estate properties not selling, apartments not selling, now, if all these activities are at a standstill, manufacturing sector, flat growth. Now, if you want to reverse this trend, for instance, in February, you gave a rebate to the auto sector for three months. I have continued it for six more months. It's a substantial rebate. It's cost a lot of tax sacrifice and to consumable durables. April and May, we didn't have see much difference, but June, suddenly we've seen the auto sales That's jumping true. up. Now, if this trend picks up in different segments also, uh, then of course you are going to have more revenue. You'll have more revenue in terms of manufacturing sector, in terms of service sector, in terms of direct taxes. And therefore, there is a hope that we'll collect more. On disinvestment, let me make Why it clear. Why did you not mention the word disinvestment? I'll tell you. Because I am not following any new ingenious process myself, the UPA government had a particular ongoing process. For those PSUs where governments are holding 70, 80 and 90 percent, they want to chip off about 4, 5 percent of their share holding or 7 percent of their share holding of 6, 7 PSUs by selling it in the market. Particularly when the market is at 25,000, 26,000. I don't mind that policy for the present because if the market is so high, and share gets sold to the small investors in the big market. So be it. Uh, Mr. Jaitley, you didn't mention disinvestment because you, you're a politician, Mr. Jaitley. You did not want a political hot potato. I, With I, the left I, parties I feel, really coming out Mr. and opposing Jaitley, you. Mr. Jaitley, you know, you have this remarkable me, ability sometimes to do something and not state why you're Let me doing. tell you. Would, you you didn't want the left after you. Reforms are an art of the possible. And therefore, you don't reform by entering into confrontations on day one. Yeah. You must do what is doable. Yeah. You must tactically do what is possible. Yeah. And what is going to lead to a roadblock 
You can avoid doing that for the present. Right, right. There is enough on the plate of this government. The UPA, believe me, yeah. has led a lot of unresolved areas on the drawing board. No. Therefore, I have a lot to act on. It's a smart but strategy. It's a smart strategy where you bank on disinvestment, but you don't want to make it a political see, issue for the moment. Take, take, take areas like, I'll give you two areas. Bank capitalization. Today, our banks are reaching 58% of the Absolutely. population. Banks need more money so that they are able to reach 80, 90 and 100% of the population. How do you get money into the banks? Now I have said I will maintain 51% for each, all PSU yeah. banks. I won't go down. I won't privatize them. They will remain public character. I will give them autonomy. But some surplus shares, yeah. today people of India have an indirect holding in the banks through the government of India. Let small investors own it. Each bank will come out with a 4%, 5% once in a while. And therefore, you will divest. And the countries have seen, have seen this kind of a divestment where uh, economic activity has picked up. There is a mass holding uh, in a body of shareholders which, uh, uh, which control these uh, enterprises. And therefore, I use that accrual of the banks in order to expand the banking sector of Point of India. Point well, Mr. JP, on, uh, on the issue of fiscal deficit, you've gone with Chidambaram's formula. On the issue of disinvestment, you've again gone with the Chidambaram formula. On the issue of Manrega, which is a Sonia Gandhi scheme, you've stuck to it. You've given 1,15,000 crore in subsidies to this scheme no, alone. No, not at all. It's, it's 33,000 odd, 35,000 odd. It's 1,15,000 in, uh, in the expenditure no, no. budget, no. which includes 59,000 crore for the Food Security Act. Yeah, that's separate. That's separate. Now, as far as Manrega is concerned, if you see my speech, we are in favor of giving these opportunities to those who can't otherwise support themselves. But the Department of Rural Development will come out with a proper structured program. I have said that I will link it to asset creation. I will link it to agriculture. And therefore, to try aimlessly for money to be distributed just as doles and be a burden on the public exchequer without creating any assets may not be in the best interest so of the economy. Uh, uh, direct tax uh, uh, cash transfers, uh, that's not no, something that you have... DBT looking... is a possible option. I have not gone into that. We have appointed an expenditure management commission which will recommend. The Prime Minister already last week took a detailed meeting. The good thing about this Prime Minister is that he is not ideologically dogmatic in these areas. So after he took a presentation, uh, with some amendments to the Aadhaar, can we use it with some amendments? And of course my party ideologically has a problem in, in, in the card being given to non-citizens. And that's a problem we've been candid about. So with some amendments, if it's a citizen-linked program, can you link some of the schemes to Aadhaar and the direct uh, benefit uh, transfer. The, the, the direct benefit transfer. Some people anticipate it will bring down 20-30% of the cost. And therefore, I am not saying this will be done, but this is an issue wide open. We are not dogmatic about it. We are willing to look at it. <laughs> but then, when you say I agree with them on some issues, I have uh, accepted the fiscal deficit uh, figure yeah. with a caveat. But then there is a lot of things they didn't do which I am going to do. At least I promised to do. Uh, but Mr. Chetley, you know, uh, one of course is a consequence of such a big mandate that we began by saying everything should be big bang. The other was directional. Now, you yourself said that UPA indulged in mindless populism. Mindless populism must end therefore. Therefore, a lot of people expected a more pruned subsidy stab. But I find that barring it's petroleum, it has remained largely I'll unchanged. I'll tell you, Arna, 45 days is an inadequate period for completely relooking at the subsidy pattern. Therefore, there are issues which you can plan out in 45 days and there are issues which will require some more consideration in the government. And let me tell you, I am not participating in a television program where I can give a big bang idea. A budget is not the news hour. <laughs> Therefore, it need not be big bang. <laughs> you have to slowly but surely move in a direction. And the direction is, do we give the right signals to our investors? Yeah. Do we expand our private sector? Do we expand public-private partnership? Do we target more income? Do I give relief to smaller people? 
and then do I uh, use that income of the government to help the underprivileged in the society? So from top to bottom, if on one hand I have gone in for defense 49% uh, and insurance 49%, I have gone in for smart cities, big investments, I have gone in for the real estate investment trusts yes. and infrastructures, yeah. and I have said I will have a pass-through tax rebate on these REITs yeah. which prevented uh, uh, an investment, I have gone in for smaller areas, I will give uh, relief to the Zari uh, manufacturers of Bareilly. I'll have a cluster for the ch cotton chicken manufacturers of Lucknow, for, for, for the weavers of Varanasi, yeah, yeah. Uh, for the Pashmina dealers of uh, Srinagar. So uh, we have picked so, up these smaller so areas Mr. also. Mr. Jaitley, since I have the opportunity to speak to you now, and you, this has been debated last few days every time prices go up, the discussion is over, you know, and you have shown a great amount of concern for the burden on the common man because you've raised the uh, tax slabs to whatever you no, can. No, my policy thousand. was, I'll tell you, my policy was the small and the mid-level taxpayer must save more and partly maybe even spend more. Mm -hmm. The savings get back into the system. His spending also gets me some uh, uh, service tax <laughs> and some indirect taxes. But isn't it tokenism because you've restricted yourself to just 50,000 increase in the exemption Navika, limited and, and 50,000 in home Navika, loans? Navika, since 1947 till today, when has in one go tax exemption been increased by 50,000? 150 became 180, 180 became 200,000. You will get 10 and 20,000 and 5,000 slabs. Therefore, I have indicated a direction. Let me tell you, if you ask me my regret on what I have not been able to do, I didn't have enough money in my pocket to give this category of taxpayers a higher relief. Left to myself if I had more money and in hopefully in future I have more money, this will be a preference area for me. So I have given them three kinds of uh, reliefs. I have increased the tax exemption by 50,000. Normally 50,000 ex expansion is not done. The senior citizens it goes up to 3 lakhs. For the second rebate I give to encourage savings because savings are down from 36, 33 and to 30%. To encourage savings, if you save one and a half lakhs instead of one lakh in all these uh, uh, PPF. Uh, PPF, bank deposits, children's education, these are all a part of that. That's an investment. If you put money into that, you get a 100% tax rebate. If you invest in your apartment and you are paying a, a certain amount as interest on the loans that you have taken, you get two lakhs. Yeah. So three categories of 50,000 each. And therefore, if small taxpayers start calculating, each one has benefited between five to seven thousand rupees to 50, 40, 50 yeah. thousand rupees. So I get a sense here, Mr. Mr. Jaitley, directionally we want to know where you are thinking in. So I get a sense that if left to yourself, you would have increased the tax slabs even more. Maybe you'll work in that direction. That's question number one. Question number two is uh, on the issue of subsidies directionally, Mr. Jaitley, where do you stand? On both your questions, as far as uh, Relief to small taxpayers is concerned, my attitude will always be positive, depending on what my, uh, the money available with me permits. As far as uh, uh, your subsidies. subsidies are concerned, I would like to see rationalized subsidies in this country, so that they are targeted. They can't be an unquantified amount given to an unidentifiable section of people, so the rich and the poor all benefit out of that. It should be targeted to benefit those who need them. And if the Expenditure Management Commission indicates something in that direction, I think uh, uh, we are willing to look On at fuel, it. Mr. Jaitley, quick follow-up. The global situation in Iraq and Syria is one factor. You pruned the bill by 22,000 crores. Should, and there's already in runaway inflation that's happening, despite all the efforts of the government. My question to you is, should the common man therefore be prepared for a trickle-down impact of the fuel subsidies being taken away and whatever the global situation is. No, you see, airport. as far as... Is that a fear you have? As far as, let's be very clear, there's a way of looking at it. Petrol is already market linked. Diesel is moving in that direction. Uh, uh, the diesel subsidy, a lot of it has come down yeah. and hopefully over the next few months it will get market linked. Kerosene is a case which is used deservingly by people and undeservingly by some people. So that's where you will have to look at it. LPG is a case where you have to be kind-hearted because it affects households. Now which kind of households is only a decision you have to take. Now that's where governments come in. 
you can't have uh, uh, a complete lack of compassion and you can't have misconceived compassion. The governments have to look at it in merit. On but merit. just 63,000 crore uh, is the provision for fuel subsidies and you have a carry forward from last year which was not paid by the UPA government, another 60 odd thousand crore. Do you think this is a realistic or do you expect this to balloon further with the Iraq crisis? You see, the, the, the Brent went up to 115 odd dollars. Yes. It's around 108 or 9 at the moment. And the oil ministry certainly is looking at it because our basket itself costs uh, a little less than that. And therefore what they have factored in, uh, uh, they'll have to look at it. But Iraq certainly makes me keep my fingers crossed. If there are two things which keep my fingers crossed, one is Iraq, one is monsoons. And when you mentioned uh, inflation, I've seen you do a couple of programs on this. Uh, I'll only urge you to look at it. In the last 45 days, we've had some six meetings. Ministers of State's meeting, senior ministers' meeting, meetings with the Prime Minister to look at prices of two or three commodities which were rising. And we've so far tried to contain the damage which is seasonal. Onion starts from 15 rupees and goes up to 70, 80 and 100 rupees. All these interventions, some people think we are overreacting, has kept it around 25 in the worst affected areas. In UP, I was told it's still 20. Therefore, when onion goes up during this crisis period to 70 and 80 and even 100, uh, we are trying to contain it. Therefore, the governments where it can be managed, where shortage is not there, it is manageable. Where there is a shortage, then you have to look across your borders. But Mr. Jetty, on a broader point on that, if I take up on that, it all depends on the way you are interfacing with the state governments. Now, I, you mentioned prices, I mentioned GST. On GST, you know, you're a man who likes to speak in specifics. You don't speak in generic terms from what I've seen. Now, on GST, you say we hope to be able to find a solution in the you, course of the year. I've had two meetings with the state finance ministers yes. in one month. Yes. And most of them, they have three issues. Please pay us our CST compensation, which from 2010 has not been paid. Now I've inherited a problem. A promise made to us has not been filled up. Today, I don't have the money. But in the course of the year, when the revised estimates come up, looking at the situation, I have every intention of trying to resolve that issue. They then are insistent almost unanimously on two issues. Keep two commodities out of GST. Now if we two, keep the two commodities out of GST, I won't get the best GST, but I'll probably get a good GST. Which are these commodities? So I am willing to look at a good GST in the absence of the best GST. One has to be pragmatic. As I said, reform is out of the possible. Okay. Then that leaves me with a problem which one or two states have. Now, two states have raised particular issues depending on the interest of their states. Fortunately, both are India states and therefore uh, uh, we will have a political dialogue with them and try and resolve that but issue. But you still haven't clarified which are the two products. Are the uh, oil products or... Uh... Uh, one is petroleum and one is entry tax. Uh, Mr. Jaitley, on the direct tax code as well, that is something that India Inc. was looking forward to. Uh, you, I've made you, a statement. You've said that you'll review the entire situation all over again. Now, well, the, uh, 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 India Inc. Uh, has uh, expressed its views. Some of them are quite apprehensive. Some may have another view. I must be very honest with you that as an opposition leader, I have looked at the direct tax code. But being bu busy with the budget, I have not gone into the details now, looking at it from a government's point of view. So I am with an open, fresh mind again going to look at it. I will have the same procedure that I followed and in the budget. And no assurance on guard, that could be a, a, a area... But I think we are going to look at these areas. Uh, that's, uh, uh, industry finds it a little more troublesome. Uh, uh, so these are all issues which I have a lot of time. This is the beginning of the government, this is not the end years of the government. So Mr. Jaitley, broadly, do you, do you have a burden of expectations? You know, the entire thrust and focus of the performance of the Modi government is on your shoulders as finance minister today. The cut and thrust of it. And this was seen to be, did you feel the pressure going into this budget that it, everyone says it must be a growth engine budget? You yourself said that. That it will unlock the growth obviously potential there is a of the pressure. economy. Is obviously there is a pressure, but it's the pressure that brings clarity in you as to what is the roadmap. The roadmap can't be that we run away from taking decisions. 
the road map is then you decide one by one even if there are adverse reactions you decide and if you read the first 20 pages of my speech and the last 15 pages of my speech the first is the steps we intend to take to deal with the situation and our tax policy we've gone out of the way to say we want to encourage manufacturing in this country so the series of items i have given relief to i saw that was a very long budget speech which is my last question mr jitley mm -hmm. you start very smartly you end very smartly with your tax proposals in between mr jitley today there was a lot of minutiae you know this project it was called 50. the reams budget and, and and rahul gandhi has and others have taken advantage of that and said that this is a 100 crore budget with too many 100 crore projects of i well, think something I something wish, to that effect i wish uh, those who make this statement had a better understanding of these issues First, let's be very clear. In every budget, including all UPA budgets, the middle part of the budget deals with all these planned schemes. Now, in these schemes, which you start afresh, four months in this year are over. It will take you another three, four months for the ministries to formulate their schemes, etc. Now, let's take a case like Ames in West Bengal. Now, the Mamata Banerjee government will now acquire land or get land. Then she will inform land has been acquired. Money will be released to the health ministry. They will get planned sanction. So even if in this year we give only 50 crores to West Bengal government, yes. they will find it difficult oh. to spend it. And you say, oh, 50 crore rupees mein aims kaise banega? Now if you have no understanding of how governments work, uh, you can raise this issue. So if you say that in such a such scheme, a detailed study will be carried on, and 100 crores for that study, interlinking of rivers i saw one of the members said how can you interlink rivers in 100 crores well it's for the report this year is partly over by the time these proposals are put into action more months will go by and towards the later part of the years uh, uh, you'll have uh, uh, some money is being spent and thereafter thereafter you have a situation where uh, monies over the next few years for each of these proposals will be released. Well, was there any pressure on you, Mr. Jaitley, for political nomenclature of schemes like Shama Prasad Mukherjee scheme, uh, also, uh, you know, some of Jay Prakash Narayan and uh, various schemes that you announced? No, I had uh, no pressure. And in fact, my party did not suggest any. Uh, there are a large number of people. So amongst the stalwarts of India that I mentioned, uh, our... Uh, uh, Swachh Bharat Abhiyan starts, uh, it's on the 150th of Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, I mentioned Sadar Patel in the context of the statue, which uh, we acknowledge uh, in the speech. Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya, uh, I mentioned. Dr. Shama Prashad Mukherjee and Pandit Dindya Alupadhyay, I have mentioned. And hopefully there will be a few more we'll mention in the coming years. Well, Mr. Jaitley, thank you very, very much. And you created quite a stir when you stopped. I hope your back is all right. No, no there's still a problem, but the, there's nothing more than just that. Well, Mr. Vishy, wish you best of health and thank you very much for talking to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. you.